Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Start with the story for you this morning, kind of having, always think of holiday stuff when I've heard this one. Many of you have probably heard this one before, but um, there was a child watching mom get the holiday dinner ready. I uh, was getting a roast done, and uh, before she, you know, put the roast in, she cut the ends off of the roast. Okay, so you had all the vegetables in there, and mom put this roast in the middle of this nice big roaster. Um, Mom, how can we do that? Why do you cut the ends off of the roast? Uh, Hey, there's the pictures. All right. I had put the pictures in the wrong spot, apparently, and so yay, Katie, for finding the pictures, getting them in the right area and following along here. Good. So there's the roast, right? You cut the ends off, you put it in there. Why do you do this? Well, that's the way my mom did it. So go ask grandma. She'll, she'll tell you maybe why. So the child went to the grand, grandmother and said, hey, grandma, mom was cooking the meal this way. She cut the ends off the roast, full of vegetables. How, why, do you, why do you cut the, end, the ends off? Do some of you know this story, by the way? Some of you following? Okay, some of you know. Um, grandma said, well, I don't know. That's the way great-grandma did it. And she's in the living room. One should go ask her, see what she says. So the child went and great-grandma was in there, and she went and asked her, and she says, hey, mom's cooking this, and why do you cut the ends off of the roast? And she says, oh, does your mom still do that? She says, I do it because the pan we had was too small, and in order to get the roast to fit in there, we just cut the ends of the roast off. Now, I hope you get it, and you chuckle a little bit, right, because they don't have to do that anymore, but just like so many things we do, we do it because why? That's the way it's always been done, and if you don't do it, then it's not going to be right. And this served absolutely no purpose to cut the ends off the roast, right? It would have been fine, okay? Um, I, I share that story today, and I like that because, once again, what are we, and we've said it multiple times already today, what are we celebrating today? What are we kicking off the season of Advent? And you've heard a little bit. Katie talks some about this, and, and hopefully you caught it in the, in the beginning, but why do we worship, or why do we celebrate this season of, of Advent, okay? Um, we can do our next slide for us there, right? Big question mark. I, I would love to think that if I went through and asked each of you, why do we celebrate Advent, each of you would give a fantastic explanation, but I suspect many of you are cutting off the ends of the roast, Right, you're just here because well, it's Advent, and while I'm here, I'm supposed to be at church on Sunday, and that's all good. And please don't hear me with any disparaging. I'm not saying anything wrong with that, but it's helpful if we we know why we're doing this. Right, we've we've changed the look of the entire sanctuary. It's one of our favorite seasons of the year. We've got all these lights. We've got the tree and all the symbols. We've got the manger scene and all this stuff. There's so many wonderful traditions that we have. Now, before we get to the next slide, what are, there's an interaction this morning, what are some of the Advent traditions that we have? Anything coming to mind? Okay. Some of you are a little slower than others. Good, that's okay. We have our Advent wreath, right? There's a lot, there's actually a lot going on here, right? Um, I mean, we got candle colors we could talk about. Why this weird pink one over here? When do we light that one? You can't tell you how many times over the years we've had discussions right before church. Oh, no, no, wait, we light the pink one when? No, that's this week. No, that's, right? So all sorts of stuff. Um, what's this candle for? Okay. Um, the difference, well, I jumped ahead. What else? Advent candles. What else? Other traditions for Advent. I've touched on a few already, but what? Trees. Here at church, in there, right? We have the trees up and at your homes. You're doing it for Christmas, not for Advent, though, right? Same thing here. Um, anybody have, what's that? Wednesday service, good. So we have special services, okay? Which, by the way, um, so the noon and evening service, okay? The 1210, and then I think 6 o'clock, 6, 630, I forget, 630. Incidentally, by the way, Pastor Josh and I are on an 
some rotations there um, where I'll, we'll be helping down to Smithville again. So, so that's starting back up. So we'll be going some of that Wednesdays. But okay, so special services. Uh, Katie mentioned, you know, we've got the Advent devotion books tied into a, a midweek series, right? So um, we'll, we'll have that happening. Um, how many of you have Advent calendars at home? Okay. So my mom's here this morning, by the way. So hi, mom. And that's one I thought of. So she's right here in the middle in case anybody's it's good. She's one of our faithful viewers at home, usually at Chicago. She's down here. But I always remember an advent calendar growing up. We would always have one. We'd usually get it, I think, from my grandmother, uh, right? And that was, of course, looking for us, that, or for me anyway, growing up, I always remember it was a countdown to when who was coming. Christmas or Santa. I was thinking of Santa as a kid, right? But um, so Advent calendars, okay? So all sorts of stuff. We have all sorts of traditions, okay? Um, but again, that doesn't tell us still a whole lot about what's going on. So let's pop the next slide, or the two slides up, the season of preparation there. Advent's a season of preparation. Uh, Katie mentioned and started talking about this already, that this is a season where we're getting ready for something to happen. Of course, this is all leading up to what's the big holiday at the end of the, near the end of the month? Christmas, which uh, it's not about the Black Friday deals. It's not about all that stuff. And I know that this is me preaching to the choir, so to speak. But Christmas is about who? It is about Jesus and Jesus' birth. It is the season of preparation, getting ready to celebrate Jesus' coming. Okay, can you do the next slide there, right? There's, but there's several things happening, and as you hear the readings today, so uh, of course we're celebrating Jesus' first Advent, and we're going to talk about what Advent itself means in a second, okay? Um, so his first coming as he was born, but in that reading today, it was pointing us to an altogether different event. You didn't hear very Christmassy readings. When was it, did, did you catch when or what events were the readings pointing to especially today? What's that? The second coming of Jesus. It was pointing us to the end times, okay? So, so yes, in the season of preparation right now, we're, we're ready, we're going to celebrate Jesus' first coming, but we're especially and also looking forward to the second coming of Jesus, okay? So my question is, well, so, so first of all, Advent means uh, the arrival of somebody important, okay? Uh, at least one of the definitions. So the advent of Jesus, and it was obviously somebody very important that first time he came, and he's somebody very important coming again to, as, as judge and, um, and bringing us to be with him, to raise all believers, and, and the blessings for believers are immense and, and, and so many and so great, and we look forward to that. Um, but if it's a season of preparation, then I think some questions are in order. How do we prepare to celebrate and or to remember those things? So let's back up for a second. Uh, if you're going to prepare for a vacation, how many of you are going to be going out of town for Christmas, for example? Anybody? Some of you? Okay. Well, all right. How are you going to prepare for your guests to come? I will tell you how you prepare for guests to come. A lot of cleaning at the house. Special people to come help you get the house clean. Okay. Um, but if you're going to go on vacation, what are some things you might do to help prep for that vacation? What's that? Pack. Good. Dads, you got to get maybe directions if you're going someplace new where you got to get reservations for where you're going to stay. Um, I got some of a list going here. If you have a pet, what do you have to do? Maybe got to get a kennel for them, somebody to watch them, somebody to feed, right? There's any number of things you might be doing to prepare for a vacation uh, to go. So in this case, we're not talking about that, but as we think about Jesus' second coming, right, we're going to celebrate the first coming of Jesus, Christmas, all of it looking forward to, all of it looking forward to that time that Jesus is going to come again, to bring us to himself. And as we mentioned people today, by the way, you know, we mentioned two families who lost loved ones um, 
and and as we think about, I know many uh, any of us in the congregation this past year, uh, you know that All Saints Day we had 20 plus families again affected, impacted, and and any number of you who have lost in in these recent years uh, lost lost loved ones. That second coming of Jesus is is especially on our minds because of that second coming of Jesus. It talks about him raising all who have gone before. And we look forward to that day because we are raised to eternal life. We look forward to that day because it is the final and fully moment, done moment when, when sin, sickness, and death is gone. And we get eternity with Jesus. So what is involved with preparing for his second coming? What, what especially during the season, which by the way, we should be doing this all the time, Okay, but this season we slow down and we, and we take a moment and, and reflect, and so we have a couple of things here. Turning from sin, what's the, what's the fancy church word for this? Repentance. Right, we're called to repentance, to take this season and examine ourselves and, 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 and repent or turn away, turn away from our sin. Jesus is coming and he offers that forgiveness, but he invites us to turn from that sin, to turn back to him to receive that forgiveness, to know that as we come to him admitting our sin, and, and we do it every week, but, but again, it's especially important as this time of preparation. We turn from that sin knowing we have that forgiveness, and, and in that we focus on Jesus himself. And it is hard in this season with so many other things to focus and distract us to getting gifts and decorations and meals to prepare and, and all the stuff that comes with the holiday season, which is all good but especially we need to keep our eyes focused on, well, if it's the manger that helps us focus. As we picture Jesus there, born in the manger, uh, born to, to grow up, to live, to die, to rise again, and to return, to return to usher us into that new kingdom. So we celebrate. And so the invitation today, well, and so as we think about that, the invitation is, of course, to focus there. And it would be nice to know when he was going to come back, wouldn't it? I think about, it made me laugh thinking about growing up. Um, myself and three siblings, um, this was the days of latchkey kids. Sorry, Mom, I know, revealing all sorts of secrets. You, you had kids stay at home, and it was a lot easier in those days. But when Mom and Dad were coming home, by the time work was done, if any of you were there alone, what did you start to do? Once you knew it was getting close for mom and dad to be there, start cleaning or whatever chores you were supposed to get done. And it was a mad dash run as mom and dad were about to, either one of them about to be home. And I think this is why Jesus doesn't let us know. Let's close with our last slide here. We're going to read a passage from Matthew 24. Jesus said, uh, but concerning that day and hour, so he's talking about the second coming, concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son." But the Father only, as were the days of Noah, therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Jesus is coming at any moment, and he wants us always to be ready. If we knew that he was going to be here next week, I suspect people would live a, live a life that is probably not the best life they would live until that day before, and then they would get all their house in order, or thinking they're getting their house in order, correct? But we don't know when he's coming. And, and while it is a joyous thing, his invitation is there to repent and to continue to examine our lives. And my hope is in this Advent season, as you take a moment and as you keep your eyes focused on Jesus, that especially it is drawn to that moment of repentance and receiving the forgiveness that comes from him, that we look forward with joy to Jesus coming, not just celebrating the Christmas coming of Jesus, but we look forward to that day when he will return when he will raise us and all those who have gone before us in faith as he ushers us into his presence for all eternity in the joys of paradise. In Jesus' name, amen.